Today was a first for both of us as we headed off to Nottingham for our first radio interview with BBC Radio Nottingham with Verity Cowley. We didn't know really what to expect or how long we were going to be on air for. Turns out we can talk quite a lot and uh, we ended up being on for about 18 or so minutes. Thank you. About 10 past two we headed through so we were live on air from 2.15. Right, are you ready for today's uh, first guests? Because they are training to row across the Atlantic Ocean. They're taking on what's known as the world's toughest row. It's a distance of 3,000 miles. They'll battle 30-foot waves, rowing around the clock for weeks on end and dealing with whatever sea life (laughs) they meet on the way. They're hoping to become the fastest mixed pair ever to complete the challenge. Jules and Ian uh, Palandine are here now. Hello. Hello. To the pair of having us. Thank you so much for coming in. Are you mad? Yes. A little bit. <laughs> it even says crazy on our banner. Oh, does it? <laughs> yeah. Does it? Does it? Because, I mean, I I can't even get my head around what you are training to do at the moment. Tell me how it all came about. Jules, do you want to explain? Yeah, so I started, I'm a rower anyway, so that's it's a good challenge. And then I tried to row at Women's Henley um, about five years ago now with a female doubles partner who's about the same height as me, which is very short, five foot three. Uh-huh. And normally rowers are quite tall and there's a lightweight category. Um, so we entered the lightweight category and they, they got rid of it basically out of that year's race. And so we trained for a whole year with a coach around life, kids, work. Um, so six sessions a week or nine sessions a week over six days. And we didn't even get to compete because there was 32 couple uh, rowers you know boats and they took the first 16 of the fastest crews uh-huh. and we didn't get to we didn't get to race uh. so the heartache and the athlete uh, soul destroyingness of that uh, made me want to do something bigger and better and fairer so across the atlantic in that race you can either do it as a challenge or a race um and so it, you can race against men women all ages and all heights and sizes so that's yeah. what you're doing. Yeah, that's what we're doing. And you're doing it as a race, are you, rather than a challenge? It or is depends, it... yeah. yeah. So we have a boat that will do the race happily and safely, and she's sturdy, and she's done it five times. Okay. But we went on a, a faster boat in Holland for our training row, and she's brand spanking new. She's lightweight. She's got all the latest technology, all the light weight kit and yeah we want her you want she's her. eighty thousand pounds <laughs> this is the thing isn't it like money yeah. is 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 part of this it's massive. like an expensive yes. thing to do isn't it ian it is massive um they do say the toughest part of the race is getting to the start line. oh really uh, oh really yeah. okay. because it is it, it, it's such a lot of money mm. and then the but the biggest thrill is when you get to the end yeah so yeah we, we we are just so excited about the fact that we can we can do it with what we've got but it's not going to be competitive you want to push enough it a bit further. Yes. Yes. yeah <laughs> and Ian, have you been a rower as well or is it Jules who's kind so, of so no Jules Jules is the rower you along this way. yeah <laughs> <laughs> um i had a um a friend who mm. rode the pacific ocean um, back in 2018 and the moment she got back it was Ian you've got to do this it is life changing changes your whole perspective on on everything and you would really benefit and I'm like yeah yeah of course I, I agree with you 100% but I can't think of one person that I could be within little over 20 feet of uh-huh. for a number of weeks Yeah, yeah. and that was it N- nothing more said really other than the occasional dig at me every every now and again and then a year later my friend had a documentary made and aired as a private little screening and a young lady came to watch it and she appeared to be on her own so I had a little chat with her now I probably should say that I'm really rubbish with names right so I tend to like give people labels and things like that because it's easy to remember them because um, well, there's not many verities, obviously, but I, I, I do know two others. So um, it just makes it easier to have a label. So me and my friend Kaz were referring to this young lady as the next Mrs. Dean from that moment. And, um, yeah. And she, and she and, was. Well, yes. Um, two, years, two, day, uh, two years and two days later, we met up wow. for the first time. We, we, we'd followed each other on Facebook. And then it was about three weeks after we met up, we went into COVID lockdown uh, for three weeks. Uh-huh. And during that 
full coat because that was the, the full sort of serious. You, you can't Beginning go out of anywhere. Yeah. yeah. And, no, um, no, it was the, it the was, year after when oh, we still yeah. had when we actually right. had yeah. COVID yeah. and you had to stay at home. You yeah. didn't even go shopping. So there was <laughs> there was uh, Jules's eldest bought COVID home and then passed it on to Jules and then Jules passed it on to me and the youngest and everyone it, had it, it. Yeah. yeah. So and I suddenly went actually. I think I found somebody that yes I can spend that that amount of time with. So uh, we discussed it, and I said yes, definitely let let's do this. And shortly afterwards, I rode for the first time. Oh wow! So, so I you had said yes even... to the challenge before you'd even sat in a boat. Sat in a boat. Yes. <gasps> yeah. I've never been accused of being too intelligent. Oh, <laughs> I love it. it. That is bravery, isn't yeah. it? Or and then you wonder whether ignorance is bliss, you know? And how do you, and how when you sat in the boat and you rode for the first time, how was that? Was it? Did you enjoy it? Do you enjoy it? Yeah. So I um I do enjoy <laughs> rowing. Yeah. Um, I don't find it as easy as some people do. Okay. Um, Jules is a natural, and but luckily she's a coach, so she's she's very good at pointing out where you can improve and what you're doing well and all that kind of thing. It doesn't take um, it too well. <laughs> <laughs> This is my turn. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is the married couple coming in, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I I, like I, it. yeah. Um, it's just that we we are very different in the way we learn things. So, uh-huh. um, I I I like to know what I've got to do, how I'm going to do it, and then get into it. But I'm also not quite the perfectionist that Jules is. So, <laughs> Jules likes to, you know, your, your knees are separating and or this that, and I'm like yeah but it, it's fine yeah your elbows you look like you're late you're sat in the sofa or whatever yeah <laughs> but they're working um yeah you know, I'm getting through it and you've been doing it for 17 years I've been doing it for seven minutes <laughs> you know give me a little something so, um, but yeah but um it was and then we, when we went on so my first outing on an ocean rowing boat in uh, the Netherlands just a couple of weeks ago it was amazing it was hard work yeah Every moment was just breathtaking and fantastic. I loved every minute of it, even when we had 35, 40 knot wind gusts coming into his head on. So it took everything I had just to stop us moving backwards. Yeah. Even that was fantastic wow. and amazing. Um, we're going to play a song. We'll come back and chat a little bit more about training, which I know, Jules, <laughs> is something that everybody asks you all of the time. But actually, the breadth of training you had to do, I think, is something that um, is really interesting from my perspective. So looking forward to hearing a little bit more about that. You're listening to Jules and Ian Palandine, who are going to take on the world's toughest row. We'll hear more from them. She's a royal. Jules and Ian, who are going to take on the world's toughest row. And every time I say that, um, you smile and I'm like, ooh, (laughs) ooh, oh my goodness. Um, um, It's it's interesting, isn't it? When I think from an outsider's perspective, when you think about something like this, a rowing challenge, you think it's physical. It's a physical training exercise that you're having to go through. But um, Jules, as you very briefly explained, um, when I met you um, outside, it's more than that, isn't it? Your training is, yes, it's hours on the rowing machine but it's far broader. Yeah, when people ask, how's the training going? You just go, oh. <laughs> um, and you just think, well, there's the mental training, there's the sleep training, there's the physical training, there's mobility training, there's the courses you have to do to be allowed to do the race, which is um, sort of sea survival, VHF course, um, navigation courses, ocean rowing courses, first aid courses. Um, <laughs> so it just goes on and on and on. The strength training is sort of weight. We've got a gym out the back. Um, rowing we can row on the water we're very fortunate to have a river right outside and a couple of boats Mm -hmm. and but then we've got our ocean rowing boat training as well so there's there's endless possibilities for training and talk talk to me about the kind of the mental training and the sleep training and that what what does that involve yeah so mental resilience training is doing something rubbish every day to to get yourself used to being really yeah doing something rubbish every day yeah so we did 153 days of climbing in the river um, open water swimming from uh-huh. Boxing Day, so right through through ice swimming, and out the other side, and we did it, didn't we? So yeah, so Jules really gets ben- feels benefits of the open water swimming, um, sunlight, you know, yeah. glistening on the water, and you you just watch Jules' face light up as that kind of happens. Yeah, you know, four degrees, it's class as an ice swim, and and she gets in and she's all shivery, and then suddenly the sun just casts itself across, her and she's like, oh, me. <laughs> 
I just feel cold and wet. Uh, yeah, hate it, hate it. <laughs> you know, it's so nice to hear somebody talk about open water swimming in that very kind of clear way because normally what we hear is how, how amazing it is and how glorious it is, but actually, yeah. for some, it's just yeah. cold and wet, isn't it? And the, and the sleep training, is that just kind of depriving yourself of sleep and still trying to...? So there's a couple of things you can do. You can do a 24-hour row on the Concept 2 row machines in the shopping centre sort of thing. You can do actual time out on the boat, which is mandatory as well, so time overnight. Um, but one person's got to learn to navigate and row while the other person is sleeping. So okay. we have yet to do that. Yeah. Um, and then there's just yeah, using the right pillow, using the pillow or not, or, or dry robe or whatever you're going to use as your pillow, just so you get used to it, or using the earplugs you're going to use, using the mattress you're going to use. use the. Well, you can, have a, can you have a mattress then? You have, that, you can you have, have the space for it's, that. Yeah, it's only a small, very small mattress because yeah. it's all to do with weight, really. The more, the more you take with you, the more everything weighs, so the slower you'll be. Yeah. And for every kilogram in additional weight, that is an extra kilogram you're dragging across the mm. ocean. Some mm. people don't go with a mattress. I think there was a mixed couple recently that didn't go with a mattress at all, just to save weight. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> well, I would wow. like a mattress. Uh, yeah, yeah. At least something that might give you a bit of sleep Yeah, might be of use. Are you worried about the waves? That 30 foot waves? To yeah. me, that's, they're not going to yeah. be like that all the time. So you've got to learn to be able to steer down them successfully. So hand steering might come out at that point. And um, so one of you might be steering with the oars and steering because you, you're not going to row down a wave when you're going faster just yeah. gravity takes over and then you've got to make sure the boat doesn't go sideways so you don't capsize and roll down it <laughs> you also have to make sure all the weight's at the back of the boat so you don't pitch pole which is when the front of the boat buries itself in into a... the wave and then you go up oh my goodness you flip yeah. over oh yeah. my days head okay. over heels as it were yeah, yeah. Okay, you're both still smiling, so that's good. Um, <laughs> let me just take a brief a brief interlude. I'll be back with you in a moment. We'll see what's happening in the cricket. Uh, Dave is watching the cricket, hopefully, you know, pitch bowling and capsizing and the whole host. Uh, um, we have a question for you both, which is from Robin Carlton. Um, I think this is when you mentioned earlier on the Pacific and you said that the Atlantic is harder than the Pacific. And Rob, is la and Rob says, why? Why? What, how, how do the oceans compare and how are they different? Oh, the world's toughest row run two races now. They had the, the first inaugural Pacific race this year. So we were interested to see whether people who'd rowed both thought the Pacific was harder or the Atlantic was harder. So the Atlantic is longer. OK. Um, it's a, a fraction longer. And Pacific is Hawaii, uh, California to Hawaii. And it's mid-Pacific. So it's only a part of the Pacific Ocean. So... I think you have to ask those rowers, really. Yeah. I think once we've done the Pacific as well, <laughs> <laughs> then I'll be able to tell you. <laughs> oh, my gosh, I wish it was telly. I really wish it was telly just to see Ian's reaction there where he was kind of like, uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just get through this one first. Which bit do you think is going to be the toughest, Ian? What do you think you will struggle with? And, and also, which bit are you kind of most looking forward to? Which bit do you think so we're going to really... The bit to look forward to is the easy bit. That is just getting to the other side safely, and hopefully have taken in all the, the possible sites that nature has to offer with things like the uh, pods of dolphins that uh -huh. follow you and whales and sharks. I'm really, I really hope I get to see shark. Um, not while I'm in the water cleaning yeah. the boat, obviously. Just And also the bioluminescence as it washes over the deck. Mm. These are all the things that people that have done it just rave about and a clear starry sky with no light pollution or anything like that so that they're the things i'm looking forward to most um hardest thing is going to be when um if jules is struggling more because jules struggles more with her sleep if she's if she's not comfortable she does struggle so i've suffered with insomnia for years so i'm mm -hmm. less worried about that uh -huh. But it will be when I'm trying to encourage Jules to have more rest, have more sleep. And she'll refuse because she'll be worried that she's not doing her bit. Uh -huh. But So it's just trying to get... A couple dynamics. Yeah, it's just yeah. trying to get Jules yeah. to help yeah. herself sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the bit. And actually ex try to explain to her while she's tired and grumpy that it's better that she rests for a bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't identify with that at all. I, I could possibly have any idea what Ian is talking about. Um, and you, Jules, I know that, you know, part of this is a physical challenge, but it's also, it, you, you've been on a real journey yourself, haven't you, yeah. over the last couple of years, which, you know, has involved your childhood sweetheart and, and all of that. So um, it's going to be a real kind of moment for you, isn't it? Yeah, sorry. 
Oh, I'm a bit so- of a moment. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's fine. So back in 2020, I I'd, um, I lost my partner at the time. He was my childhood sweetheart as well. We'd got back together the year before, only 11 weeks prior to him dying. And um, yeah, he, he wanted me to row with or without him. And unfortunately, it's without him. But... He was really supportive of the row and um, we're still going to do it. So, yeah, it's, it's it's taken a long time to get to the start line for me, having started that journey in 2019 with another team and um, and then didn't row in the 2020 year, but they did. And, um, yeah, so it's a bit of heartache, but, mm-hmm. a lot of, you know, there's a lot of passion to still get to the start line for me and for him and for everybody that's invested in us so yeah. far with the sponsorship and things. So, What was his name? Do you it's Jodie. Jodie, yeah. Yeah. Jody. yeah. yeah. Um, well... Um, you know, will you keep in touch? Yes, totally. Is yeah. that is oh, that okay? yes, definitely. Yeah, we'd love to come back. Can we yeah. hear about how it's going? Yeah, yes. how yes. it's progressing, and um, you're both absolutely determined, and it's um, yeah, I can definitely sense that. So I have no doubt that you'll be there on the start line <laughs> on my birthday. <laughs> will it be on your birthday? Yeah. <gasps> oh, it's December 2025. Is that yeah, it? December that... the 12th, 2025. Oh, it's my brother's birthday as well. <laughs> um, look. It's a joy to speak to you both. Um, thank you for thank sharing your story us. and very much looking forward to hearing more from you over the next couple of years. Fantastic. Uh, Jules and Ian Palandine there from uh, Radcliffe on Soar who are going to be rowing the world's toughest row across the Atlantic Ocean. We loved every minute of that interview and we hope to be back soon to keep on sharing our journey to the start line.